Do you ever find yourself scrolling randomly through Instagram and Facebook, wondering what the hell you're even looking at? Well, look no further than today to get some direction, because I'll be sharing with you 10 must-follow Luthier profiles on Instagram, so you can turn that doom scrolling into a time for discovering some of the most breathtaking guitars and the Luthiers behind them. Hey, TAC family, welcome to episode 213 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show's all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC family members. How often have you uttered the phrase, I wish I could play guitar more, I just don't have the time. Now, it might startle you a little to realize that you say that maybe a little more often than you want to. TAC family member Kurt is crazy busy. He has a round-the-clock work schedule, yet he still finds time somewhere to squeeze in his guitar playing. You'll find out here in a little bit what Kurt's secret is and what musical opportunities have opened up due to his regular guitar routine. Plus, you'll get a look at what guitar lick the TAC fam is working on this week. Hint, it's named after one of my favorite game show hosts ever, Bob Barker. Plus, you'll get your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use, which includes a legendary guitar for sale, a mind-blowing arrangement of a common bluegrass fiddle tune, and a new Montana artist that you absolutely must hear. But first, let's dig into 10 must-follow Luthier profiles on Instagram. Okay, truth be told, I wasn't sure how I was gonna create and present this list. At first I thought, well, I'll just tell you about 10 random luthiers. And then I realized that doesn't really carry any weight. I wanna give you a reason to follow these luthiers on Instagram and Facebook. I wanted their accounts to provide education, inspiration. I wanted them to be visually appealing. Boom, then I got it. Those are the criteria I needed to create this list of 10 must follow luthiers. So I got my list. And then the next hurdle was, how on earth do I present them to you? Should I do a countdown? Well, of course, I'm gonna do a countdown. But I also wanted to give you uh, some sample posts, what it's like to follow these luthiers so that their personality shines through. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Without further ado, let's dive into the countdown. Coming in at number 10 is Halland Guitars. Yes, just over in Livingston, Montana, about 10, or not 10 miles, 30 miles away from Bozeman, uh, I want you to follow Halland Guitars. Why? Well, because of posts like these. Look at these amazing sets of tone wood. And all he says is, a few of the available Brazilian sets that I have. Yeah, Gage does this all the time. Gage Halland. He posts these amazing pictures of woods that are available to commission a custom guitar. So please follow Halland Guitars. Next up on my list, coming in at number nine, is EJ Henderson Guitars. This is the daughter of Wayne Henderson. Elizabeth Jane Henderson. Yeah, she builds guitars too. In fact, her account is really fun to follow because she has an entirely different perspective. She's a relatively new mom from what I understand, so she's balancing being a mom with building amazing one-of-a-kind guitars. And a great sample post from her is this one. You'd probably expect I would have believed enough in my budding building career to buy myself a stamp for the backstrip just like my dad's. Or maybe you assumed my dad gave me this one. No, it was Don. I just love the lightness that she brings to, well, building these amazing instruments. And it definitely comes through in her account. Coming in at number eight is Michi Matsuda. Please follow him at Matsuda Guitars. Why would you follow him? Well, number one, he builds amazing instruments, mind-blowing creations. In fact, I've chosen a few sample posts for you because this first one simply says this. Use chopsticks from a local sushi bar. And the follow-up post is a guitar that he built out of those used chopsticks. Yes, uh, Matsuda number 125A. Uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg with that account. Coming in at number seven is none other than pre-war guitars. Yes, pre-war guitars. You have to follow them because they post stunning pictures of their instruments but they also post some of the amazing players that happen to play their instruments. And this sample post is of course of Molly Tuttle. And it simply says, Molly Tuttle stopped by the shop for a quick setup on her Brazilian herringbone. Coming in at number six 
is my friends at Mule Resonator Guitars. Why would you follow Mule Resonator Guitars? Because you get to see each week some of the amazing instruments they build. And you're thinking to yourself, aren't they just only resonator guitars? They're just steel-bodied guitars. Can't really get much diversity in that. Au contraire. They post some amazing pictures of custom builds. We're talking Mavis, we're talking steel bodies, custom colors, you name it, it's there. But the reason I want you to follow Mule Resonator Guitars is because they post performances from their artist. And this most recent one is from Charlie Parr playing his Mavis and playing a tune off of his brand new album. Here it is. The next account, coming in at number five, is Greenfield Guitars. Yes, Michael Greenfield. Why should you follow this account? You get into the mind of a luthier with this account. And I say that because I am assuming that Michael Greenfield is a very type A personality. Tony, how could you say that? You've never even met him. I have not met him. But the pictures that he posts of his workbench and general organizational skills, they are neat as a pin. Is that is that the right term? Neat as a pin? Tight as a pin? Neat as a button? You get the idea. His workbench is in perfect order. Case in point, this post, where he simply says, the corner of my workbench is where the tools I need for each task live. I just finished cutting and fitting a neck joint. Tomorrow, I'll glue on the fingerboard. And the organization is impeccable, as you can see. Okay, coming in at number four is Benjamin Paldacci Guitars. I hope I said that right. Uh, the last name is spelled P-A-L-D-A-C-C-I, Paldacci. Um, this is an account that I followed because of the striking pictures. Case in point, this post. And I'm gonna shuffle through a couple of these pictures because, wow, you wanna talk about Tonewood and beauty? This account has a lot of it. Uh, some pre-sites Cocobolo Madness. Back in 2015, when the good stuff was still obtainable. The flamed jumbo set is one of the rare flats-on sets of wood I have in my stash. But Cocobolo is extremely stable. And this set is still perfectly straight, even years after its purchase. Okay, coming in at number three. I think I'm on number three. I have to check my list. Yes, coming in at number three is Dion Guitars. Yes, guitars built by Dion James. Uh, his handle on Instagram is Dion Guitars, D-I-O-N. And the sample post I have for you is one that shows the sheer beauty of the inside of a guitar. All the caption says is braced and boxed. Look at that bracing pattern. It is, it's astonishing. It leaves me breathless. And that's, that's just one small sample. Coming down to number two. Coming in at number two is Daisy Tempest. You have to follow Daisy for a couple of reasons. When you follow Daisy, you're gonna get step-by-step -step posts of the guitars that she's building and the reason why she's doing the things that she's doing. And I find this the best part about her account. Not only do you get the visuals of her building the instrument, of her using the tools, close-ups of the tools, close-ups of the craft, you get the reasoning behind it. Case in point, this post I've selected for you. Uh, it says this, spent a nice portion of today with a chisel in my hand, which is one of my favorite ways to be. Here's a shot of my African Paduk Tempest coming together as the back braces were being roughly carved. Later, they will be honed and fitted to the sides, which I will get bending soon. Coming in at number one is my dear friend, Tom Sands. You have to follow Tom. Tom is the guitar geek of guitar geeks. You wanna learn about Tonewood? Follow Tom Sands. You wanna learn about building? Follow Tom Sands. Do you wanna laugh your guitar geek butt off? follow Tom Sands. Do you want to hear some amazing guitars in the hands of amazing artists like Will McNichol? Follow Tom Sands. The list goes on and on, but the reason I've selected for you to follow Tom is his knowledge of Tonewood and the reverence he has for where it comes from. I've talked to Tom on numerous occasions, and for each piece of amazing Tonewood that he has in his stash, he has a story to match it. Case in point, this post where he says, now this is a bit special. Here's some rather ridiculous timber with a combined age of 8,000 years old. 
very deserving of the head exploding emoji. Some incredible ancient Sitka preserved in the deep freeze of the Alaskan permafrost and some black oak unearthed from the fields of the Fenland Basin. These sets will go into a very old Model S for Jim in a few years time. I'm sure this world can wait a little longer. More on this amazing wood soon. And I have to say, you know, that's, that is just a, a small snippet of the amazing tone woods and the amazing stories that Tom has. So I've selected another post that shows you a simply stunning set of koa. You will never see koa like this ever anywhere else. This is the stuff. Here's what he says about this amazing tone wood combination. Quote, the Joshua tree koa and the singing tree redwood. This is going to be an exceptional build. Thanks to Josh for trusting me with the wood and thanks to Ben for trusting my judgment. If only 2022 wasn't so far away. I'm really excited because he's starting on my guitar very soon. And he actually made sure I knew where the ebony for the back and sides of my guitar came from. Pretty cool stuff. As I mentioned, please follow Tom. Please follow all the luthiers on my list. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, Tone, you forgot about such and such a luthier. Or, gosh, I follow this luthier and they're simply amazing. Everybody should know about them. Well, now it's your turn. In the comments below, let me know who you follow on Facebook and Instagram. If there's a luthier you want to tell your fellow guitar geeks about, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Ah, yes, it's time to turn your attention to the Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge. And today, the Guitar Lick is named after game show host Bob Barker. Yes, indeed, you'll get all the details here in a moment, but you might be thinking, what's this whole Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge? Tone, I'm new here. Help me out. Well, within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, every day we focus on one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Monday is a technique challenge. Tuesday is a guitar lick challenge. Wednesday is a scale an improvisation challenge, Thursday is a rhythm guitar challenge, and Friday is a chord transition challenge. Today is Tuesday, today is Acoustic Tuesday, and in Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we're working on guitar licks. So I thought to myself, I should bring that guitar lick into the Acoustic Tuesday show to give you a sneak peek into what the TAC family is working on this week. So without further ado, here's the Tuesday TAC Guitar Lick Challenge. Bob Barker is the namesake for today's Guitar Lick Challenge. Yes, it's game show week within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, meaning every single daily challenge has a nod to a famous game show host of sorts. And you're thinking, Tony, what does that actually have to do with music? Well, we're focusing on the key of E minor within TAC this week, and E minor has always brought up this sense of mystery. And when I think of mystery, well, I think of game show hosts. I wonder if the contestant will get the question right. I wonder with one simple spin of the wheel, will they win 10 gazillion dollars? So yes, the focus is on E minor this week within tech and its mysterious feeling. And thrown into the focus on E minor is integrating triplets. Yes, triplets are incredibly powerful. And if you can harness their power, you actually gain this wonderful rhythmic command and you can kind of add some, some interest when it comes to finger style, which is exactly the technique we'll be using today. So without further ado, here's the lick Bob Barker so you can hear what it sounds like. Yes, this lick is a very uh, horizontal lick, as you could see. It kind of uses the B string to execute an E minor scale in a descending fashion and then ends on that low E. A very cool lick, in my humble opinion. It's actually really beneficial if you play the blues. It's really beneficial if you want to add that kind of sparseness yet maintaining a fullness in whatever you're playing. So this lick is extremely good at that. And if you wanna learn it note for note, TAC fam, all you have to do is sign in. This challenge is your daily challenge for today. It's Tuesday. Tuesday is Guitar Lick Day. Log in, this is waiting for you on your home screen. Click Start Challenge. You'll go immediately to the teaching video. After you get comfortable with that, you could play along with me in the play along video, pick a speed that's suitable for where you're at. And then of course, if you wanna follow along on the tablet here, just click that icon in the lower right hand corner. Boom, you've got your tab in a separate window and you can learn the lick at a pace that's comfortable for you. 
Okay, so where do you actually use this lick? How do you use this lick? And I actually want to show it to you in one singular way, but going to some different chords. Because I think you can use this as kind of a, a, a linear way or a serial way to have your notes lead into the chord that you're about to play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on an E minor chord. I'm going to play this lick. And then I'm gonna go back to that E minor chord. And then I'm gonna play the lick again. I'm gonna stop it short and go to an A minor chord. So you can kind of see that, oh, I can use this lick as a link in between chords. An interesting rhythmic and melodic variation to my already awesome finger picking. Okay, here goes nothing. As you can see, this is a great lick for linking chords together while you're finger picking in E minor. But that's not the only use for this lick. In fact, if you remove the lick idea and you just look at, okay, I'm playing an E minor scale on the B string and accompanying it with a kind of a drone on the low E string, this is a really wonderful avenue to, to go down and, and create with. You can find melodies, you can find little slices of repeated phrases that maybe you wanna integrate into your playing on a daily basis. So yeah, this, this is the type of lick that you sit down to learn how to play. Once you learn it, all of a sudden you look at the clock and you're like, um, okay, I guess an hour passed and I was lost in a world of mystery in E minor. And that's, and that's a great thing. It really is a great thing. So I hope you dug this lick. I hope you can find a way to integrate it into your playing. Now, real quick, before we get back into the show, I want you to, I want to encourage you to find small wins in your guitar playing sessions. I want you to, I want you to find those small wins every single day that you play. And those small ones are so important for two reasons. Number one, well, it just makes us feel good about playing. It makes us realize that we are making incremental progress every single day. And that feels so incredibly good. The second reason I want you to find those small wins is because scientifically, it's related to maintaining a habit. Our guitar routine is a habit. So if you find those small wins, you're reinforcing the habit that you want to have. And this is, as I mentioned, it's science-backed. Uh, PhD B.J. Fogg from Stanford University, he's a habit science professor, and he found that there's a link between celebrating the habit that you want to repeat and the likelihood of you repeating that habit. So bottom line, celebrate those small wins. It'll make you feel good, and it'll reinforce your guitar routine. Speaking of the TAC family, I'd like to take a second and shine the spotlight on TAC family member Kurt. Kurt has been with Tony's Acoustic Challenge for quite a few years now, and I've actually had the chance to meet Kurt in person, and I have to share with you, he is a major guitar geek, and he's also very dedicated to his guitar routine, despite having an absolute crazy work schedule. Yes, he still manages to find time to squeeze in some guitar playing. And I'm glad he does, because he writes his own songs and he attends open mics regularly. And attending open mics actually led to the goal that he's working on over the next 90 days. In fact, he had a chance to share what his guitar routine looks like and what goals he's working towards in the last Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party. And here's what he had to say. Um, sure. So um, the goal for the next 90 days um, is to is to play out in public as much as possible. Um, I had the good fortune of being able to play an open mic for the first time in about 18 months last week. Um, consequently, I met um, a fellow TAC member there from the opposite coast, which was awesome, NorCal Nolan. We had a great time. Oh, yeah. um, and and what was really cool outside of just you know getting to meet a fellow attacker um, in the wild, if you will, Tony. <laughs> outside of that, um, the open mic host in, invited me back to play a ten song set um, in December and do a podcast. So the next ninety days are are really dedicated to committing some songs to memory, um, a lot of my originals, and then uh, gearing up for for that opportunity. And um, in terms of obstacles, you know, I think really it's just like a lot of folks here. My my schedule's crazy. I'm still working like around the clock. So just struggling, you know, guitar and, and the routine with the work life um, is, is always a challenge, but uh, I think it's one that hopefully I'm up to task with. Yeah. You know, Kurt, you've mentioned that your schedule has been a little kind of bananas uh, pretty historically. That's been pretty consistent. Is there any uh, tips or tricks that you could offer anybody else who, who may be kind of battling the same thing? 
Yeah. Um, what I would suggest, um, what, what I do is I try to travel um, with a guitar when I can. Um, and I try to travel with a uke when I can't. Um, you can almost always find room for some kind of stringed instrument um, in your life. Um, I play first thing in the morning and last thing at night when, when I'm home, when I'm not on the road traveling. So um, there's always a way to just squeeze a few minutes in a day. And hopefully that few minutes turns into a couple hours if you're lucky. <laughs> It's always so great to hear from Kurt. You know, for somebody who's in a perpetual time crunch, he always has this amazing positive attitude. And he even shared some tips for those of you who might find yourselves in a time crunch. Now, Kurt had the chance to share his guitar routine and his guitar goals in the last Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party. And for you TAC members who want to attend the next one, make sure to mark your calendars for Wednesday, January 5th, 2022 at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. That's when the next Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party will be held, and I sure hope to see you there. Let's go ahead and transport ourselves to the Midwest, shall we? Specifically, Huntingburg, Indiana. We're gonna visit guitar geek David Chin and see what's in his guitar arsenal. Now, David's guitar arsenal comes with a message and he says this, sorry, I'm not a great photographer. The picture is a little blurry. This picture is in my music room at home. I've collected these guitars over the past two years. Now, thanks to Tony and the Acoustic Challenge, I'm having a blast playing them. Here's what's in David's guitar arsenal. The back row, left to right. A Groat Telecaster, an Epiphone DR100, an Epiphone Les Paul SL, and a Groat Stratocaster. The front row, left to right, we have a Groat Semi-Hollow, a Jameson Electric Acoustic, a G-Style Les Paul, and a Zenny Stratocaster. Huge thanks to David for sharing his guitar arsenal with all of us guitar geeks. And you might be sitting there thinking, wow, David got featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show. I sure would like to get featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Well, let me bring on my lovely assistant to go ahead and tell you how to get featured. I wanna to propose to you a win-win-win scenario. I wanna feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I wanna feature you and your guitar arsenal, or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar arsenal shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar arsenal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. Yes, you guessed it, it's time for your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use. I've got a boatload of newsworthy nuggets for you, so let's go ahead and dive right in. First up is a legendary guitar going to auction on November 19th. Yes, in just a few short days, a 1968 Martin D45 is headed to auction. And you might be thinking to yourself, that's cool, that's neato, a 1968 Martin D45. Well, it gets even more Neato. Yes, this 1968 Martin D45 was owned and used by Eric Clapton during the Derek and the Dominoes era. Yeah, it's going to auction. Holy smokes, right? What a cool opportunity. Let me give you a couple details about the guitar. This guitar was used by Clapton most prominently at Derek and the Dominoes debut concert at the Lyceum Theater in London on June 14, 1970, as well as when touring with Delaney and Bonnie. The guitar is being put up for sale as part of Julian's Auctions Icons and Idols Rock and Roll Auction to be held online and at the New York City Hard Rock Cafe on November 19th and November 20th. Unsurprisingly, given the guitar's provenance, it won't come cheap. Estimates of its value currently range from $300,000 to $500,000. So if you happen to have you know, some pocket change laying around, yeah, you could go ahead and bid on this guitar. Now, this guitar is very cool and it holds a very special place in music history, specifically Eric Clapton's history. And you might be thinking, eh, this is a neat story, but it sure would be nice to hear the guitar. Well, my friends, you can. Here's a clip of Delaney and Bonnie playing with Eric Clapton in the 1970s. They're playing the song, Poor Elijah. You can hear this D45 in action right now. Work online. 
as we move through the news, there's been a couple bluegrass luminaries who have passed away over the last few weeks, and I want to pay my respects and offer condolences to the friends, family, and fans of these fine folks. First up, Phil Ledbetter passed away at 59 years of age, and Phil Ledbetter was a trailblazer when it comes to the dobro. He played in a ton of different bands. In fact, I've got a list here. Uh, he played with Grasstown, Wildfire, J.D. Crow, Dale Ann Bradley, plus he released a whole bunch of solo albums, and Phil was always a dobro player that I looked up to. Uh, the other bluegrass luminary that passed away uh, was Sonny Osborne. Sonny Osborne passed away at 83 years old. Uh, Sonny was a, a banjo and bluegrass pioneer, obviously a member of the Osborne brothers. And again, I just want to pay my respects and offer condolences to the friends, family, and fans of those folks. Okay, moving on and kind of on that same vein of bluegrass, I was scrolling through Facebook one day. That's kind of the topic of the show today. And I came upon a post by Jake Workman. And he is playing the most elegant, the most beautiful, the most mind-bending arrangement of Whiskey Before Breakfast. Now, if you don't know Jake Workman, he's an incredible flat picker. He plays with Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder. And you just have to hear this arrangement. It's simply brilliant. Here it is. <music> item on my news list for today is a local Montana artist that I want you to know about. This uh, individual is a friend of mine, Ryan Aker. In fact, I recently caught up with him. Charlie Parr played the Elm, and Charlie invited me to play with him, and Ryan actually opened the show with his now wife, uh, Elena Schiffer, who is from another Montana band, Laney Lou and the Bird Dogs. Anyways, uh, Ryan is releasing a new album, and I just wanted to share his music with you because it's awesome. From his playing, to his lyrics, to the sound of his voice, it's the full package. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd love for you to meet Ryan Aker. Here's his song, Ear to the Ground, that I had the distinct honor to uh, actually add a little dobro part to when he was recording it. Let's have a listen. Found you drinking water from the bottom of the fair the well. Same year that the hammer dropped and broke your spell. That song was off of Ryan's album, Winter, Where You're From. He does have a new album out now entitled Heavy Horns. It's available on his website, ryanacremusic.com. That's R-Y-A-N-A-C-K-E-R music.com. And if you want to hear a track from that, look no further than right where you're sitting. Let's go ahead and listen to the track over and over, which was the first single released off this new album. Tennessee River, will you carry the dead? Tennessee River, I'm already dead. Over and over, over and over again. And on those wonderful, sweet notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But before I do so, let's take a sneak peek into next week. Next week, well, it's that time of year where I share with you my holiday gift guide. Yes, I'll be sharing with you some guitar geeky gifts you can get yourself or your fellow guitar geeks this holiday season. That's happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday right here on YouTube at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. I want to thank you so much for joining me today, but before I let you go, I want to remind you of one thing. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please take the time and invest in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Guitar Geeks Unite, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers. Mm -hmm.